6, we are following breaking news out of MCAS Miramar, where an F-18 military jet has crashed. We are live with the latest information from military officials. And a boil water advisory has been expanded after E. coli was found in tap water. The impact in areas and what you need to do to protect yourself. Plus, a presidential mugshot. Details on former President Trump's time at a Georgia jail and what he's saying now about the case. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts right now. We begin with breaking news here. Glad you're with us. I'm Eric Connors. And I'm Carrie Lane in Fernando Ronpour. We begin with some breaking news. An F-18 military jet has crashed. This is near MCAS Miramar. Yeah, this happened near the eastern part of the base in a remote area. And CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol is live near the scene with what we know right now. Dana Marie. Eric and Carrie, right now we are waiting on some good news from MCS Miramar on the status of the pilot hoping he is okay. The search is underway right now. They tell us that pilot was ejected from the F-18 around 11 p.m. last night. The aircraft went down on base, again in a remote area on the east side of the base. So right now you're taking a look at video of the search overhead. MCS Miramar, MCAS Miramar tells us they found the aircraft, but the status of the pilot is still unknown. The San Diego Fire Department are supporting Miramar with the search with helicopters, as you can see, along with a Coast Guard helicopter. Now the F-18 crash happened um, and of course now very preliminary information on the investigation. What led up to this plane crash? Again, stick with us as we we're hoping to get more information. The public information officer from Miramar is telling us that they are going to release a press release soon, hopefully with more details on the search of the pilot. But all we can do right now is hope that that pilot is OK. Stick with us. I'm Dana Marie McNick. I'll send it back to you. And new information to share overnight here. A boil water advisory has been expanded in the South Bay after San Diego County officials say they found E. coli bacteria in tap water. Yeah, so the boil water advisory started with Imperial Beach and the Silver Strand. It now includes parts of Chula Vista and southwestern San Diego. CBS's Chris Crow joins us live in studio with more on the advisory and how this is affecting people. I mean, this is not something you want to hear if you live in yeah, any of one right. of those areas. No, not at all. And we're also paying attention to see if it might expand beyond that, yeah. though we don't have any indication that it could could, but it's a good news or excuse me. It's a good idea to continue to follow the news. I should say uh, if potentially this bit of bad news may impact you. Now again, this is only impacting Imperial Beach, Chula Vista, Silver Strand, parts of Southern San Diego and the Coronado area. Now here's what you're being told to do. If you're going to use water, ingest water, boil it for three minutes first and then let it cool before use. Now this is meant for drinking tap water, brushing teeth and cooking. You can still wash your hands without doing any boil water, uh, boiling of water. Just make sure you use soap and make sure that you go the full amount of time. Uh, as for showers, those are fine too, as long as you don't swallow the water. However, be careful with young children and babies. Now this is going to have an impact mostly on restaurants and businesses. In fact, we saw many of them are closed right now in that affected area or some have had to really change how it is that they're operating. Public pools have been impacted too. Many of them have closed and we know that of course a lot of families still using those in these last couple weeks of August. Now as for why this is happening, authorities claim E. coli has been found in the water supply. It could be from human or animal waste. Now we did speak with residents about how they feel this could impact themselves, but also the businesses in the South Bay that have been sort of struggling with a lot of the beach closures that have been impacting tourism this summer. I think it impacts it a lot. I mean, not just the fact that the beaches have been closed for over 600 days, but you know, it just impacts our whole, the whole reputation of the city. Yeah. And, and that's terrible because that's a much longer term effect. They're losing some money. Yeah, they they were trying to get a table at the Brigantine down there in the South Bay and they found that sign that the, the restaurant was closed. Now affected customers and businesses will get a notification when the advisory is over. And of course, for more tips, you can always go to CBS 8.com. Eric and Kerry. Chris, thank you. Former President Donald Trump back at his golf club in Bedminster, New Jersey this morning after being processed in Atlanta for his fourth criminal indictment this year. The former president and 18 others are charged with criminally conspiring to overturn Georgia's 2020 presidential election results. Jared Hill has reaction from the former president. 
A presidential first with a mugshot for former President Donald Trump as he was booked and fingerprinted after turning himself in to Georgia authorities yesterday. He's facing 13 counts alleging a scheme to reverse his 2020 election loss in that state. Trump said he was, quote, treated very nicely during the process, which took less than 30 minutes. Then he was released on $200,000 bond. We did nothing wrong. I did nothing wrong. Later, another first for the defiant former president, sharing his mugshot on X, formerly known as Twitter, posting for the first time since his temporary ban after the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Trump critics and supporters showed up outside the Fulton County Jail yesterday, including Trump ally in Georgia Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. He's the victim of the weaponized government. More than half of the other 18 defendants in the case have turned themselves into authorities, including Trump's former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. Those who haven't surrendered face a deadline of noon today. Jared Hill, CBS News. Former President Trump was not arraigned in the Georgia case yesterday. The Fulton County DA has proposed the week of September 5th for that proceeding. Meanwhile, Trump has added a new Atlanta-based lawyer who specializes in white-collar crimes to his defense team. And we're learning new details about the deadly mass shooting at a biker bar in Orange County. Authorities say the gunman was a former police officer and was targeting his estranged wife. We now know the gunman was former California Police Sergeant John Snowling. Authorities say Snowling killed three people and wounded six before dying in a shootout with deputies. Police say that tra uh, he traveled from Ohio targeting his wife who filed for divorce eight months ago. We do not believe that there was any uh, argument that ensued. Mr. Snowling, the suspect, then started randomly shooting at patrons within Cook's Corner. His wife, Marie Snowling, is severely wounded but expected to survive. They were loyal until the very end. This morning, San Diego Loyal fans are preparing to say goodbye after the soccer club announced its last season. The team had been playing at UCSD's Torero Stadium, which holds 5,000 people. But the ownership group says they needed a stadium three times that size and had no luck finding one. Now fans say the team will be greatly missed. It's quite devastating to hear that kind of news. We have a large soccer fan base in San Diego, so I know that's going to be it's going to be missed. The soccer club has 10 remaining matches left for the season, which includes four home games, another major league soccer team, which is a step up from USL, which is tier two. That MLS team is expected to come to San Diego in 2025 to play at Snapdragon Stadium. Today, MTS is encouraging Aztecs fans to take the trolley to the football opening game. Here it is tomorrow, the first game of the season for you Aztecs fans out there. They're playing the Ohio Bobcats at 4 p.m. at Snapdragon Stadium. This morning, MTS officials are giving tips to fans who are planning on taking the trolley tomorrow. MTS is adding an extra green line service from SDSU to the stadium station. The service will run starting at 1.25 p.m. before the game and 6 p.m. post game. It will run about every seven minutes. They encourage fans to get the Aztecs All Seasons Pass, which is a discounted transit pass for $23 for all seven home games. You can purchase this now until September 9th. And there is free parking and ride lots located throughout all three lines. Expected to be a pretty nice uh, day, a pretty nice afternoon tomorrow for that uh, Aztecs football opener, right, Carrie? Yeah, it is. The weekend's going to be gorgeous, and the timing of this warm-up is actually kind of perfect in the sense where the weekend will be beautiful, and then temperatures will peak on Monday and Tuesday when most of you are probably at work, hopefully in air condition or kids in school where it is also air conditioned. If we take a live look outside, we're still dealing with that cloud coverage, especially along our immediate coastline. A little bit of fog. This isn't really impacting a ton of the community, but like I said, the closer you are to the coastline, you will see this issue. We are going to see it clear much faster today than what we saw yesterday. Downtown San Diego is 66 degrees right now. Your winds are out of the north five miles per hour. Humidity is 84%. As far as our current temperatures, we're mostly in the mid 60s along our beaches and even the inland valleys. A little cooler in Ramona and Alpine, low 60s, same for Escondido. 58 degrees in Mount Laguna and Brago Springs is 77 degrees. So this 10 day trend, I like this picture because it kind of shows you 
the uphill battle we have over the course of the next few days and then we come down. So we're going to go up the hill and then we'll be over it, which will be probably very welcome by the time we get into Tuesday. Temperature is going to be right around the seasonal average over the weekend. Monday and Tuesdays when temperatures will peak, we will be anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above the seasonal norm for the inland valleys, mountains, deserts. As we get into Wednesday, high pressure system starts to push off to the east. Temperatures slowly start to fall and we get some nice relief and we also do introduce the monsoonal moisture back into the forecast in the uh, mid part of next week as well as the chance for thunderstorms out in the mountains and deserts. Marine layer this morning looking pretty good. Not as bad as yesterday, much more shallow so the sunshine will come out and by the afternoon. Wow, it is going to be gorgeous. It will roll in a little bit again this evening, but again, it's really only going to impact the immediate coastline and then things will clear rather quickly as we get into uh, the latter part of tomorrow morning. For those of you that are getting ready to head out and drive on into work, I want to get you caught up on the border time, uh, wait times for those of you that are going to be down in that area. San Ysidro Port of Entry is about 140 minute wait right now. Otay Mesa Port of Entry is about 45 minutes and everything else actually throughout the community is still looking pretty good right now on the main freeways. Eric? Still ahead here, the legal action Maui County is now taking following those deadly wildfires. And cleanup efforts continuing in Palm Springs following Tropical Storm Hillary. We'll take a look at the damage left behind.